All right, so now we're pretty much done with the styling stuff. So I actually wanna just kind of clean up a few things. I, after having this on here, I find that it's, well, it's a little bit distracting and that's the last thing we wanna do. We don't wanna distract our users from making, well, signing up for the email. So let's, let's do some changes here. And I'm gonna get rid of that spin, which is down here. Stop it from spinning. It's cool to see, but we don't need to do it. And then welcome should not be welcome anymore. So let's go into our view and it should say join us instead of, well, not our Trijango view, but our newsletter view for home. It should say join or sign up now, sign up now. And of course we have to save it and wait for a second. Um, all right, so sign up now. And then I'm gonna change these to uh, built with Django and not necessarily have bootstrap and just have these as one liner. So those look a little bit better too. Or Django, or we'll just say Django plus Bootstrap. So Django and Bootstrap. And then created for starters. And there we go. So now we've got one liners and these kind of align a little bit better than they did before. Um, and that's pretty much all we'll do as far as this homepage is concerned. Uh, it is kind of a bigger homepage and that's has to do with um, our CSS. So if we look back at our top nav bar CSS, we've got this minimum height of 2000. So if we change that to 1000 and looked in here, now it doesn't scroll all the way down to the bottom. Of course, you could add a whole nother row for your footer and stuff like that, but I'm gonna let you do that um, because it's fairly easy to do. So that's a good challenge to leave you with as far as the design of the homepage. Um, and now that we've got this, We've changed a bunch of stuff in our CSS, so let's make sure that we collect the static. Python manage.py, collect static. And we say yes, run the server again, refresh. Okay, cool, all this stuff works. Now if I click on about, we've got a template not working. So let's go ahead and add it. I'm gonna close out all these other templates or all these other pages. And we wanna see where that about page is coming from. And that's on try Django 18. So about is where we're gonna have it. So let's go ahead and make a new about page. So about.html. And again, it's gonna be extends base.html. And we'll do block content and block. And in here, we wanna do div class of row, close off that div. And then we'll do div class of column small six, column small um, offset of three. Close that off and then do a paragraph text of class equals to, well, we'll just do paragraph text and say, this is about us. And I'm gonna copy that a lot. Close off that paragraph and we'll just copy this a lot too. Okay, and then above all of those, I'll put an h1 tag and say about us. Refresh in here, and now it's showing an about us page. Um, so that's kind of cool. Now that we have that, it's something that we can use more of. And of course you could use font awesome icons or something like that to make it look a little bit better or some images, that stuff I'm gonna leave up to you. Uh, this is all placeholder text as of now. So we've got our about, contact us, home. And, but if we go into log in, goes to this page here. It doesn't actually do anything. And for most people, we don't want it to do anything. But as a, a end user or as the super user, as the admin, we might want to see all of our signups. So I'm going to show you some basic query set stuff, which is very useful for Django um, in general. So this is something that you will want to use at some point, but we only want to see it if they're the super user. If they if we don't if they're not the super user, we don't want them to see it. But as I've already shown you with the Navbar example. So if we go into the navbar, you can use this call right here on any of your views and allow you to have some custom backend content. So just a real quick example of that would be if I copy this and went to home.html in my block content, I could say if user is authenticated, I will leave this here so you can see it. And I'll go down to the bottom, say end if. I can say h1 you are logged in and refresh and now it's different different content down here and of course you could do that same thing with the jumbotron above you can have them not or not showing or only showing up when they're not logged in so we come up here 
and if, and then we'll say if not, refresh, and now it says you are logged in. So this is the home page. I log out, successfully logged out. We go back to the home page, and now it looks like this again. We log in again, and here we are. Uh, so there's one thing I want to do with this home page is when they do log in, I want them to be the admin. So if the admin is there, we want to see everyone who has signed up so far. So that's what we'll do now. In our views, this is where we're going to be doing it in our home dot uh, our home request here. So this is what's rendering that home page, right? So there's a way to actually check whether or not this is the this user is authenticated and this user is staff. Um, we could do both. So we could do in here if request dot user dot is authenticated and request dot user dot is staff. These two calls are built in, they're methods built in to the Django auth system that says whether or not they're authenticated and whether or not they're staff. So if they're staff, then we'll just add in this context of saying, well, we want to add something in here. And I'm going to call it a query set. And for now, I'll just add this query set of being one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can see how to work with this in just a second. So if request that user is authenticated, then this is our only context. Notice all the other context goes away. Um, so if we refresh in here, um, oh, we got to spell authenticated correctly, is authenticated. There we go. All right, so now if it's authenticated, so I log in, uh, Boolean object is not callable. Oops, this is this one right here. So that is just a Boolean object. So if it's a staff or not, uh, then it'll actually set this context. Um, so now, and it will change all the other contexts before it, right? So keep that in mind that that context is changing all other contexts above it, uh, which is okay because in our base, or excuse me, in our home.html, uh, this is all we show anyway. So now we're going to just put this context variable here and we're going to call it query set. So query set and Sublime Text is automatically adding those. So I'm going to get rid of them. So I go into query set, it's not showing. So if I log out and log in as my admin user, which is jmitchell3, passwords123, it's now showing this query set. So it's now coming through. So it's only for our admin user here. And that's something that we'll continue to do. Uh, but I do want to tell you that this part right here is the same as this part right here. And you could also say staff. You could also do request.user is staff. So you could say request.user is staff. You can also use that and it'll say true or false. In this case, it's saying true, of course. If it was the other user, it'd say false. So you could also do not, or sorry, if not, we would do if not, and then you could do an if statement there as well. Okay, so now that we've got this query set here, we want that, that query set's gonna show up if it's a staff member or if it's uh, only if it's a staff member. So if I log in again, it doesn't show it at all. Okay, cool. So now that we've got this, let's actually stop here. And in the next one, we'll talk about how to do query sets from a model. So actually getting data from the database into our view so we can see it. Um, this is going to be a basic introduction to that, but it's going to allow you to see what you can do with Django and how fairly easy it is to do that. All right, so if you have any questions here, let us know. Otherwise, let's keep going.